Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. And you have tuned in for our pre-service meditation. So we're going to spend the next 10 minutes just turning within, getting still, and communing with that presence of life and love that animates our being. And so I invite you to take a nice deep breath. And as you release it, just release any sense of concern about what has gone on up until now. Another nice deep breath. And as you release it, just letting go of any thoughts about what is yet to be. Closing our eyes, turning within, and just being in this present moment. And we'll use the breath as an anchor, just observing that miracle of life recreating, rejuvenating, reshaping itself with every breath. So as you breathe in, it may help you with your concentration to just silently say to yourself, I'm breathing in. And as you breathe out, silently repeat, I'm breathing out. And if the mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do, when you notice that your attention has wandered off from the breath, just take note of what's going on. You might label it thinking, thinking, hearing, hearing, feeling, feeling. Whatever it is, without judgment, with great compassion, just notice and then bring your awareness back to the breath. I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out.
And so as our meditation comes to a close, just take a nice deep breath. And as you release that breath, allow yourself to anchor back into your body. Maybe wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers, just to bring your awareness back into a room where you are. And when it's comfortable, open your eyes. So once again, welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service. To those of you who joined us after we started the meditation, a warm welcome to you. We're so glad you're with us. Let's begin with our opening chant led by our beloved Tina Meeks and Sam Krieger. <laughs> Thank you, Tina and Sam. <laughs> so let's really anchor that awareness of love being in whatever place we are in right here, right now, as we join together in prayer. Turning inward, in this moment, I absolutely recognize that behind this sense of me, you, him, her, this and that, here and there, it's all one, one life, one power, one presence that I call God, that infinite invisible, that is infinite love, infinite joy, infinite beauty, abundance, wholeness, well-being in every way it can be felt, known, and realized, and it is the very life that animates my being, that animates the being of each and every person gathered for this service this evening, here and virtually. I absolutely know that God is present and unfolding through every part of this service, that we feel its vibration of love is that connection that we can still feel even though we might not be in the same physical location. I know that we feel the vibration of love of all those who are of service this evening. I absolutely know that we are touched and inspired and uplifted by the music as it unfolds through Sam and Tina this evening. And I open myself right here, right now to being that vessel through which the word that is meant to be spoken, the word of the divine flows through me that all of us gathered this evening, including myself, are uplifted, are awakened to the truth of our oneness with God so we can experience that truth more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks right here, right now, for all 
the goodness, all the blessings that we receive during our time together. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. trying to solve the puzzles in my brain did you know a mighty wind came rushing in and took my love in a hurricane do clouds relate to one another or do they get so tense that they have to blow? I don't know science, but I know my heart aches every time a loved one has to go. Mystery man, you've got all together that's why everybody comes to you I suppose I should have asked you sooner then I would know exactly what to do I'm wondering why can't people live forever or can you tell me where do I belong? Would you show me which way leads to heaven? Would you give me the answers to this song? Mystery man, today I saw a rainbow and suddenly a smile was on my face. Is it real or is it really magic? All those colors sharing in one space. Sunrise and sunset and in just want to understand oh, mystery man would you help me understand Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tina. 
I remember when you premiered that <laughs> at an event, um, a Gourmets for God, actually, years back, that Tina joined, um, that I was hosting with some other folks. Anyway, welcome. Welcome uh, to this service. And this evening, I wanted to look at this idea of turning the other cheek. Talk about a question for mystery man. A few months back, back before all of this social distancing or anything where we could actually have multiple people in one office, uh, practitioner Jean Trebek interviewed Dr. Mark and I um, for her website, InsideWink.com. And uh, in the interview, she had asked me to offer an idea of what this quote from Jesus' teachings about you know, turning the other cheek really means. It's a re reference to uh, his Sermon on the Mount when he said, you have heard that it was said eye for eye and tooth for tooth, but I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. Now, the fact that Jean asked me to offer an interpretation of that quote is really testimony to the fact that there are no accidents in this universe because that quote caused me a great deal of consternation as a child. I mean, I remember there was so much emphasis on Jesus being all about love, all about compassion, and yet Jesus was asking us in a situation where someone was slapping us to set ourselves up for another slap? I mean, that's what it sounded like to me. And, you know, it wasn't just that we were asked to be like doormats. It was like we were being encouraged not just to let others walk over us, but to actually abuse us, you know, do harm to us. And so that really, really didn't set with, well with me as a child. And particularly because I remember when I first heard that quote, it was shortly after I had witnessed a friend of mine getting slapped across the face by his mom. Uh, it wasn't something that happened habitually, thankfully, but I just remember being so taken aback by that and just feeling the impact of you know, that kind of physical um, abuse. And uh, you know, then I came across this teaching. And so it really, it was problematic for me. And I remember approaching my mom, who in our household, we were raised in Catholicism, but a very, very liberal Catholicism. We were taught there was nothing we needed to accept if it didn't sit right with us, that we should feel free to question anything, even if it's the Pope himself that was telling us something. And so I asked my mom, and I remember that she said, well, I don't know if Jesus really said that. And if he did, I don't think we really understand what he was trying to say. Because I don't think that Jesus would ever ask any of God's children to subject themselves to uh, pain and suffering for no reason. And you know, that was great, but she didn't really offer me an alternative. She just said, I don't really know, but I don't think it was about that. So then I remember, because I felt very comfortable questioning people, questioning a nun at the school where I went, and her response to me is, you know, Mark, sometimes it's a hard journey to be a Christian. Now that just totally satisfied me. I mean, now I get it. Okay, not, not even remotely. And so as I, over the years, explored this and coming into a metaphysical teaching such as science of mind where we don't take scripture literally, but we look for the deeper meanings, we look for the significance 
Uh, we see every character and every situation in scripture is representing some part of ourselves. What I really uh, came to understand is that Jesus was actually teaching his people that the quote that we have heard many times about eye for eye and tooth for tooth from Exodus was really misunderstood. You know, and historians have said that in Jesus's time, in Judaism at that time, rabbis at that time had already rejected this literal interpretation of that quote, that we should um, you know, take vengeance upon those who had harmed us. As a matter of fact, that quote is in direct contradiction, contradiction to the teaching in the Torah that says, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against your countrymen. Love your fellow as yourself. So that's straight from the Torah. And, you know, there at that time, Jesus was like his fellow rabbis trying to educate people to, you know, that literal interpretation of eye for eye, tooth for tooth. No, that's not what Judaism is all about. So if we're not supposed to, you know, get revenge or want to retaliate against our enemy, we're supposed to turn the other cheek, but it's not about inviting abuse. What does this whole idea of turning the other cheek mean? I think we have to look at the fact that there's a natural ingrained response in us that when someone does something hurtful, to us, I mean, it doesn't have to be a literal slap. When someone does something that seems like a slap to us, there's an impulse to strike back. It's like this automatic built-in defense mechanism. But when we do, we continue to perpetuate the energy of conflict and violence, whether it's physical or emotional. So we get into this, you hurt me, so that gives me the right to hurt you which then, because you've been hurt by me, makes you feel justified in hurting me back. And we get into the cycle of, I hurt you, you hurt me, I hurt you, very productive, right? Or the other really highly productive behavioral pattern that we fall into, and yes, I'm being sarcastic, is rehashing, reliving the incident over and over again, is bringing up all those bad feelings, resenting, what happened. And to me, the idea of offering the other cheek isn't to be hit again, but to not turn in the direction of the conflict and engage in the conflict. Turn away. Turn away from the conflict. Rather than reacting to or focusing on the wrongdoing and the, the hurt, the resentment about it, reliving it in our minds, turn in the direction of how to constructively deal with it and move forward. Don't stay stuck in this pattern of feeling hurt and wanting to strike back. You know, where we tend to think of turning the other cheek as setting ourselves up for another slap, it's actually the opposite. The idea behind that is the opposite. When we keep obsessing over the slap, the hurtful behavior, it's actually akin, in that case, to conjuring up the experience over and over again. So actually, in those instances where we keep you know, rehashing it, focusing on it, we're allowing ourselves to get slapped again, slapped again, if it's only in our mind, even if it's just you know, in our imagination. From a science of mind perspective, you know, we teach that God's potential lies in everything and everyone. And so to us, turning the other cheek represents turning away from the human condition to God. What that means is that we're turning away from the situation in the world, the hurt that we've just experienced, and we're turning to that potential of goodness that is God's nature in all of us. And we're looking for some good to be made out of the situation. 
rather than obsessing on the condition in the world as it stands right now. You know, I got to see and practice this principle in um, the corporate arena. I uh, saw it taught in some customer service training that uh, was a course that we had purchased from originally designed by uh, Xerox. And it was to help customer service representatives, and in my case, I was running a help desk, for those who were uh, performing customer service over the phone to um, be able to deal constructively with some of the difficult situations that we're confronted with. And so our help desk, we were help desk for the brokerage industry. So customers like UBS, Charles Schwab, you know, those big brokerage companies, they would call us when their machines weren't working, which meant they weren't making money. And let me tell you, quite often, when they were calling about the fact that something was going wrong and they weren't able to deliver services to their clients and therefore they were in a really bad position, they could be losing money, they were not always pleasant. They could be absolutely nasty. And we found that service representatives who were dealing with that all the time could burn out on you know, getting all of that um, berating energy coming their way. Now, because there's such a focus on being courteous with clients, no matter what, we didn't necessarily go down the direction of the customer is always right, but that the customer always deserved to be treated professionally with courtesy. So sometimes, you know, people would feel, the representatives would feel that they had to just swallow that um, berating verbal hostility, all that energy. And sometimes if they were just trying to stuff it and not respond to it, one day they would lose it with a customer that was being um, nasty on the phone. So the idea of the turn the other cheek, where you might think that what we were asking or what they were doing by not responding, by just taking it in, was turning the other cheek, not at all. What was emphasized was this idea of turn the other cheek in the sense of rather than react to what's being said when someone's being berating, being hostile, go deeper and try to listen to what is the concern that they're expressing. There's some kind of frustration that they're going through. Listen carefully to their concerns and if you can come back with an understanding of how important this is to them and that you're there to help, you can actually turn that energy around into a collaborative energy. And it was extremely effective. So, you know, a client might be just saying that, you know, this company and your company and you all are blah, bitty, blah, bitty, blah. And if the representative could say, look, I know that this is really important, that you're in a really bad position right now. If your clients are calling you and you can't answer their questions, they depend on you. I understand that, and I'm here to work with you. All of a sudden, rather than reacting hostile, hostile back and say, how dare you speak to me like that or anything like that, it's suddenly turning to a different energy, turning to the energy of, okay, I understand where you're coming from. I'm not agreeing with it. I'm understanding it. Now, let's turn this around and let's work together. So in that sense, we're turning away from the hostility to God, to the energy of collaboration. There's a way for us to turn this around and make good of it. And yes, there were times that we might actually have to speak up and let them know that being belligerent wasn't helping the situation. But you know, it's a whole different thing. You know, when we're coming from a place of the greater potential 
in ourselves and them coming together versus striking back that can turn things around. So in other words, instead of saying, you have absolutely no business talking to me that way, you're a total jerk, versus, excuse me, I know that you're really frustrated and I'm trying to work with you. If you can just calm down and work with me, we will get this solved. Those are two very different things. We're not saying, go ahead, keep, keep calling me whatever you want to call me. You know, metaphysician Emmett Fox, who's in uh, Unity, uh, which is a sister teaching of religious science, who's a science of mind, he told us that instead of thinking of the problem or difficulty, to think about God instead. In the idea of turning the other cheek, it's about instead of dwelling on the bad behavior that you know, someone has directed our way, instead of dwelling on the hurt, turn to the potential to transform this into something positive. When we turn back to that place where we feel that divine potential in us, from that place of wholeness, then we can ask ourselves, so what is the positive way to move forward with this? And when we're really open to that, you know, we may intuitively sense that, you know, right now there is no reasoning with this person based on where they are in consciousness right now. I could argue with them, I could do whatever, and they are not able to hear it. It's time to walk away. We might be intuitively guided to do that. We might be intuitively guided to realize this person is not going to shift their behavior based on anything I say right now, and they're being abusive. I need to move on. Uh, it might guide us to confront them from the place that the God in me that's bigger than my hurt calls forth the God in you that's bigger than your hurtful behavior. You know, there are any number of actions that we could be led to take. There's no one way that I could tell you when someone, you know, is behaving badly toward you, doing hurtful things, here's what you have to do. There's no one perfect response that's going to fit. You have to turn to God within to be able to determine the positive course of action. But when we honor the the idea of what is turning the other cheek represents, there are two things that you will absolutely find. Is one, there would be an absence of a sense of retaliation or ill will toward the other. And there would be a presence of the sense of something constructive, something beneficial for ourselves and others with whom we have issues. That would be the direction of turning the other cheek. There'd be no sense of retaliation, but there would be a sense of something constructive that we can do that is not to bring harm on anyone else. And so I like to practice with the you know, idea of the namaste consciousness, the Hindu greeting namaste, that in its simplest form basically says, the God in me honors and greets the God in you. In situations like a conflict, I like to go to the God in me that's greater than the anger or the hurt that I'm feeling recognizes the God in you that's bigger than your behavior. If we work with that, as we keep doing that kind of work to clear our hearts of the poison of contempt and condemnation, turning away from the condition and turning to God to be able to show us the way into greater good. We free ourselves of the hurt. We free ourselves of the anger. And we find the pathway into greater love. So let's take a moment to turn our attention inward.
And I invite you to turn your awareness to any situation where you might feel hurt and a sense of wanting to lash out due to another's actions. And as you feel that energy of wanting to strike back, take a deep breath. And as you release it, move into the deeper impulse in your soul to feel the situation resolved, to be free of the hurt, to move forward constructively. That is the impulse of God in you. Remind yourself, God's nature in me is greater than my hurt or my anger. God's nature in this person or in these individuals is greater than his, her, or their actions. And I invite you to call upon your higher self to reveal the action that allows you to deal with this constructively and to move forward free of the anger, free of the hurt, into greater love and peace. And know that even if that action isn't revealed right now, you've turned in the direction of the solution and your consciousness is opening to it. Accept that there is a pathway whereby you will feel at peace, free of pain, a pathway that brings no harm to anyone and only opens the door for healing with others. And so I invite you to set your intention to release any patterns of rehashing and reliving the past hurts or seeking to retaliate for them. Just be willing to let that go. And in so doing, turn the other cheek, turn in the direction, setting the intention to embrace a greater sense of freedom by turning away from the hurt and moving into the greater experience of love and peace. And so it's from this place, as we have turned our awareness to that greater potential of the divine, that I invite you to join me in prayer as we join in knowing the truth about some of the human challenges that we face along our journey. Absolutely knowing that God truly is the one power, the one life, animating all creation, that God is fully and equally present in all beings, all places, all things, including each of us gathered for this service this evening. I know that we are all expressions of the divine. And so from this place, I speak the word for those who are struggling with any sense of challenge around transition knowing that that nature of God is eternal, it is birthless, it is deathless, it is the same yesterday as it is today as it will be tomorrow, that that nature of God is always there, it is constant. And so for those who are feeling unsettled by any change that has come their way, including if it's the loss of a loved one moving into the next dimension of life, let us know that that experience that they had before is still there as a vibration of God, God's love to be experienced in a different way, that we remain connected with all our loved ones who have left this earth plane, that those situations that we have so cherished that no longer are available to us there's some other way for us to experience God's nature because that nature is constant.
And I absolutely know that that nature is one of perfect wholeness, perfect health and vitality. So where there's any experience of dis-ease or discord, let us know the truth of that absolute perfect healing energy of the divine that can transform anything into that which reflects its own nature of health and wholeness. And as we know this truth, I know that the perfect right healing emerges for those who are struggling with any sense of dis-ease and discord and they move into a state of well-being. Let us also know the truth that this vibration of God is a creative energy that's constantly seeking to give of its nature unto itself. And so that nature lies in each of us to be shared in unique ways. And for those who are struggling to find a way to give that is valued, that is appreciated, we know the truth that God's nature is right there to be given in that way that moves them into whether it's a perfect career, work opportunity, whether it be in hobbies or just in the way they express life with their loved ones, that that creative impulse of the divine is there to put them in that perfect place where they are valued and needed for the gifts that they have to share. I absolutely know that this vibration of the divine is limitless. It is infinite and there's no lack in the divine. There's no lack or limitation. So where anyone is experiencing any sense of lack, let us know the truth of that infinite giver receiver that God is in each one. And I know that as a result of that an expansion occurs where there's a greater capacity to give and receive, be it love, be it of a creative essence, be it in the area of finances, it's all God energy that is there to be embraced and to be put back out into the universe. And let us absolutely know that this nature of the divine in all of us is one of love. And as we know that truth, we align with that vibration of love and know it for all beings that that love of God is able to love all parts of itself, resulting in a greater sense of love and compassion for ourselves, for others, in all relationships. Every relationship is a relationship with God in whomever, as whomever. And we get to align with that love of God and experience it more fully. And knowing that that vibration of love is always for good, let us align with it as we set our intentions for greater good in silence. And so, whatever these intentions may be, I know there's so many intentions right now for greater healing of this pandemic, for this to be gone, for you know, greater financial well-being for those who are suffering, for so many, so many intentions. Let us know that that is the impulse of God for more of itself to be known and felt and realized. And as we know that God is in all these situations, the greater good, the healing, the revealing of good comes forth. And so in absolute gratitude for knowing this, let us all declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. So we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's with a heart just filled with love and joy and gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so, it's done in the mind of God, and so it is, and together we say, Amen.
Spirit run my life and my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle and no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the Spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life and my Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle and no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Tina. So this is a time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so you should be seeing a link coming up right now if you'd like to give online. Uh, if for some reason that's not working, it's our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that'll take you to our donation page where you can uh, make your donation. Also, please know that we'll be here for about 30 minutes after service, so till about 8.15, 8.20, uh, to answer any calls if you would like to give a donation with a credit card or debit card over the phone. Uh, we're happy to receive donations that way. And of course, you can always mail in your gifts, your checks. Um, but please know how grateful we are, obviously, that's what keeps us going here, uh, so we can be here for you. So thank you for supporting us in doing that. And with that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. As we bring our service to a close, just want to remind you that um, if you would like prayer support after the service, we will have practitioners available via Zoom. If you join us, if you're on Facebook Live right now, join us on uh, Zoom and we can connect you with a practitioner who will be able to um, pray with you. It'll be a private session in a breakout room. And uh, you can submit your prayer requests to uh, prayer at nhcrs.org. That's the email address. And you can also call them into the church office, 
762-7566. Select option four, which gets you to Ministry of Prayer, where you can leave a message, a prayer request, something you'd like our practitioners to pray about. And um, if you just want to be uplifted in prayer during the week at any time, you can call the same number, 818-762-7566. I feel like I'm on a telethon. <laughs> and and uh, you can uh, select dial a prayer, option three, and that will give you a pre-recorded uh, reading and prayer done by a practitioner. And so we're always there to support you in prayer. Those prayer requests are checked daily or at the end of the day and sent out to all of the practitioners. Uh, want to also take this opportunity to thank everyone who's been of service. It's uh, always just such a pleasure to work with the team here. Thank you, Adam, once again <laughs> for being our guide to make sure we were heard and seen up here. Uh, to Alex and Blair who and Doreen, who was here to uh, run the cameras and all the technical stuff here in this sanctuary to our awesome, awesome, the, the love affair <laughs> continues. <laughs> Tina Meeks, uh, the beautiful support this evening. And Sam, as always, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you to uh, Christine Crawford, practitioner, who is out there holding vigil along with uh, practitioner Liz Racy. Thank you so much for that. To our Zoom hosts, I believe uh, Marnie Rader is our Zoom host this evening, and Brenda Jordan is uh, working with her, as well as I know Lynn Romanowski is out there of uh, support, and who knows who else on the Zoom team, because we always have so many people pitching in. And of course, uh, to Melissa Allen for um, being there to uh, support us for Facebook Live. And I uh, have a couple of announcements for you. Uh, just a reminder again that we'll be here for 30 minutes after service to, uh, if you want to call in a donation at that time. Uh, my Wednesday evening service next week, the topic uh, be on the same link here, Facebook Live or Zoom. My topic will be spontaneity. Maybe I'll figure out what to talk about when I get up here. How's that? <laughs> uh, we always invite you to stay informed and up to date with um, us through our website, nhcrs.org. You can sign up there if you haven't already done so for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters to stay informed with all the new things that are coming up. Uh, this coming Sunday, we will have our grief support group led by practitioner Carol Winokur. Uh, Carol is absolutely masterful in uh, leading grief support. So if you know anyone that's going through any kind of experience of grief, loss of a loved one, or some other transition in their lives, uh, Carol has stepped up during this stay-at-home uh, time to uh, offer this twice a month. We usually do it once a month, so it's on the second and fourth Sundays. So um, that will be at 1 p.m., on Zoom, and you can get the link on our website. Uh, please remember that we have our Zoom virtual patio before and after service, so you can join with congregants for 20 minutes before the service just to visit, and then uh, also afterward, if you'd just like to hang out with us on the patio, and I'll be there to uh, have a reception line with anyone who wants to just say hi and get a virtual hug. A uh, reminder that Teen Church, Teen Church for ages 12 through 18, happens on Zoom every Sunday at 9:45 in the morning and Wednesday evenings at 7:30. Our men's group uh, happens on Zoom every Sunday at 11, and we have a Zoom 15-minute meditation Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m. So 8 to 8:15. That's a wonderful, just really bonding experience that we've been sharing. Now, and information for all of that is where? NHCRS.org. <laughs> and so with that, um, just want to say thank you to all of you for joining us. Let's turn within one more time. And so once again, 
how grateful I am for all the ways that that infinite spirit of the divine has made itself felt and known and realized to us and through us this evening. I absolutely know that through this time together, we have been uplifted, we have been inspired, that maybe in some ways we don't even realize healing has occurred, that we have awakened to that presence of the divine. And I know that as we've come to look at this idea of turning the other cheek, that we leave with that greater sense of whenever we feel a wound, a hurt of any kind, to turn to God, turn to love, turn to the solution and not engage further in the problem. And that blesses us as we move forward. It ripples out into the world and blesses others. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we've received and how they multiply. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thanks again for being here. Let's join in song one more time. Bless it all.